The chess world is in shock and that's because of an amazing historical performance at the Superbet Rapid and Blitz event in Warsaw. Magnus Carlsen is going into the final day two and a half points behind the leader Wei Yi. Was having a great time, having a fantastic score. Magnus is not doing badly at all, but two and a half points difference with only nine more games to go. That is huge. Well, the key game of the day is the one between Magnus Carlsen and Wei Yi. Magnus, at the moment they are playing against each other, is only one point behind Wei Yi. So he's in a must win situation in order to catch up with the Chinese leader. In this video, I'm going to show you this blitz game, five minutes per person, two seconds increment. And if you like this video, well, let me know in the comments, what do you think of it? Subscribe to the channel, guys. We'll really appreciate all your support. And here we go. Look at this. One knight f3 by Magnus. The move d5 is played. g3. It's a ratey opening. Black goes for the move g6. Bishop g2. Bishop g7. Castling kingside. Black is occupying the center with both its pawns. But this is absolutely okay for white. d3. Black develops. The knight to c6. Of course, black is also in good shape. Easy development. And now the first interesting moment of the game as Magnus played here the move e4. There are various ways of handling this situation. You can maintain the tension by developing your knight to e7, keeping all the pieces on the board, costly kingside on the next move. But Wei Yi comes up with a remarkable decision here. Not a bad one, but one I thought is playing basically into Magnus' his cards. Black decided here to take on e4, and after that, the defile is open and the queens are coming off the board as well. But this is normally speaking the type of position Magnus really enjoys. Not a sharp theoretical battle. It's a position with all the rooks and minor pieces still on the board. Still a lot to play for. Although for a lot of people, this is maybe even a boring position. Don't worry, we will get to see some action very, very soon. Bishop g4 is played, pinning the knight on f3. So black is intending to put a knight on d4 to attack the knight on f3 and make use of the vulnerability of the rook on d1. Therefore, c3, controlling the d4 square. Black goes with a knight to f6. White questions the bishop by attacking it with the move h3. Bishop goes back and white really wants to catch that bishop. Plays here the move knight g5, intending to take it. Of course, black is not going to allow the trade of minor pieces. Drops back with the bishop to d7. White continues developing here himself, knight to d2. Black goes for the move h6, the knight is under attack, has only one square to go, it goes back to f3, and here castling queenside is played. So, so far everything quite normal, I think uh, black is also quite satisfied with the position, objectively speaking, it's pretty, uh, pretty equal. How should white continue here? Well, I like the next move, rook e1, so you do overprotect your uh, pawn on e4, so you're preparing to move the knight away, maybe to b3, maybe to c4. So black plays the move bishop e6 to control this light square diagonal, so making it harder for the knight to uh, come to a nice square. But another idea for white here is to improve that bishop from g2. It was not doing anything on that uh, diagonal anymore. Now it's on f1 and looking for an opportunity to trade off itself probably on uh, on c4 at some point. Well, first, knight d7 is uh, played, but Magnus doesn't want to exchange too many pieces here at uh, this point. Goes for the move, knight b3. So that opens up the path for the bishop, can be developed to e3. And uh, well, also the knight, what is it really doing on, um, on b3? Black goes here for the move a5, intending to go a4 and kick the knight. Bishop e3, first the bishop comes to the center, a4 is going to be played, attacking the knight, and the knight goes back to d2. So finally, all white pieces, they look reasonably active, and uh, black should try to come up with a plan here, how to approach such a position. Is this pawn on a4 useful, restricting the mobility of white pieces, or is it actually a potential target? Well, diff difficult to say actually what is uh, what's going on. Maybe an aggressive move like f5, changing the, the tension on the board, trying to generate some play in the center. But that's not an easy move to, uh, to make at all. Here, Vayi, inspired by uh, Magnus' uh, play, also tries to improve its dark squared bishop. Here, 
bishop is on its way to c5. And if bishops are coming off the board, well, black is in, uh, in good shape. Why doesn't want to cooperate? Played here, fantastic idea, b4. Controlling d, c5 square. And uh, well, there are even ideas to go bishop uh, b5 at some point and try to win that pawn on a4. So white um, is about to make use of that weak pawn. Black captures en passant. Pawn takes back, so the symmetry is restored again with an open a file for the rook. Looking for opportunities to target the black king. Bishop c5. So the bishops are going to be exchanged. White takes on c5. Knight takes c5. And here the pawn on b3 is twice attacked by knight and bishop. White goes for the move b4. Where should the knight go to? That's an interesting question. Not to b3. If you do that, knights are coming off the board. And white's plan is here to kick away that knight from c6, after which... If it goes away, the pawn on e5 is no longer defended and can be taken. So, instead, the knight goes back to d7, maintaining control over the pawn on uh, e5. Knight to c4, so two knights hitting the pawn, and still, b5 is a very annoying move to deal with. That means that black got to protect the pawn with the move f6. And that is another weakening move. We will so, soon see what uh, I exactly mean with uh, that. Um, but more pawn moves you make, the more vulnerable these pawns will become. Rook a8 check. It's almost made, but a knight can interfere. Knight cb8. And here are Magnus playing very quickly this move. Rook a e1. No immediate threats yet, but potentially very dangerous with two rooks being connected. Looking for mating opportunities. But black offers... The exchange of uh, of knights here. That um, seems to be a logical decision, but it does weaken the pawn formation. And uh, maybe later on, these pawns are becoming more vulnerable. What should white do? Well, white's pieces, they're looking pretty okay. But at knight on every, it's not doing much. Where should it go? To the side of the board, attacking the pawn on g6. Black defends it with bishop f7. And here... Classical, technical style, knight g2, as after king c7, the knight comes to e3, which is obviously a much nicer square from where it controls. A lot of nice uh, squares to go to in the next uh, few moves. Still, I, I, if I were playing black here, I would think I need to control that knight with something like bishop e6. Remember this for your future games when you have a bishop on two squares distance, it's neutralizing the squares uh, from the knight to uh, to go to. So I think that is quite a uh, nice technical move, but Vahie decides differently. He played here the move knight c6, offering the exchange of rooks. And now, big moment in the game, because should you exchange rooks or not? Well, you can take on d8. It was not played in the game, but let me show you this. If you take back with the king, it's rook a8. You're losing your rook. That's not a good idea. If you do take... Uh, with your rook, which is the most obvious move, trying to control the open file, well, then there's knight g4, and both your pawns are in trouble. This is what I mean with weakening pawn moves. So white would win a pawn in that case. So, missed opportunity. Both players overlook this plan. Rook back to a3 was played. Magnus wants to play with uh, all rooks on the board, which offers him better prospects fighting for the initiative, but swapping the rooks was a more concrete idea. Winning a pawn. Rook d7 played. Here you may still consider going back to a8, trying to initiate the exchange of rooks. Um, knight g4 is much less impressive because the pawn on h6 is defended and black can even strike with a move like f5. So, different plan. White played here. Nice technical move. Playing a game with a short time control. I really like Magnus' his, uh, move, even though it's objectively not the best. His idea is that after the bishops are coming off the board... And black uh, attacks the knight with the move b5. The knight goes back to e3, intending to go to d5 with check. And then the pawn on f6 is vulnerable. Knight e7 controlling this square on d5. So white cannot jump with a knight. Rook a8. The rook is back again because it wants to exchange this rook on h8. And after rook hd8, knight comes to g4 anyway. When both pawns are under threat, how to defend it? Well, the knight goes back again neutralizing the threats of white's knight. One pair of rooks is exchanged here. The rook takes d8. Now the king comes in. The king is ready to come to e2, attacking the pawn on, um, 
on c3 is not a problem you can always defend it with rook c1 and the king will come to the center very soon black kicks the knight away with h5 the knight goes to e3 so it's about to come back to d5 therefore knight e7 and still looks like everything is under control white goes king e2 but what should black do here well solid move like king c6 for instance or another waiting move it's perfectly playable but Vaihi started to play in his natural style he is not I, I mean he's a good player but i think he really excels in sharp dynamical positions but that is not what the posi position is asking from here and here at, uh, the, at, uh, at this particular point the move f5 is very ambitious he wants to generate some activity with its pawns but it also weakens again because what can white play here it was not done by Magnus, it's the move rook a5. Look at these pawns on the fifth rank. First, the pawn on b5 is under attack. If you protect it, then you open up that uh, fifth rank, attacking the pawn on b5. If you take it, there is rook takes e5. You are regaining the first pawn, you are taking the knight, and on the next move, after solving the threat of the knight, well, the um, pawn on c4 is going to drop as well. This would have won a pawn for white. But Magnus is not thinking about these pawns. It's typical for him. He is playing petrosian like type of uh, chess he is just playing for squares trying to control but missing also these tactical opportunities well he played a move f3 playing solid chess and once again vahi is playing super ambitiously with a move h4 weakening the structure on the king side white captures the pawn rook h8 but the idea is that black wants to win the pawn on h4 and then the pawn on h3 pawn takes pawn g takes f5 White is unable to defend this pawns, but look at this, the rook comes to g1 with devastating threats. If the pawn on h4 is taken, it's rook g7, pinning the knight. If you defend it with your king, it's rook takes e7, nice tactical shot, as king takes rook, is met by knight takes f5, and the rook is gone. White will be a piece up. So instead, king d6 is played. Now the rook comes into g5, intending to go h5 and save the pawn. So black got to take on uh, on h4 now but here is rook takes f5 once again the same tactic tactic if you do take on f5 it's knight takes f5 king goes away and you pick up the rook that is not good still there is not much of a problem here for black if you try to stay solid with something like king e6 attacking the the rook attacking the pawn on h3 the knight can come to d5 uh, i believe this should be holdable but Players are super low on time here. Rook takes h3 is played. And now the rooks are still on the board. Very annoying check. The king goes back. And uh, here is rook e6 attacking the knight, attacking the pawn. Knight c6 played. The knight comes in with check. So um, the king got a move. King d7. Now the rook goes away with the plan of going for rook g7, attacking the king and the pawn on b7. There is still a very nice move for black, but so difficult to fight. Probably it would not have crossed my mind at all. There is knight e8 with the idea of getting your knight to e6. Then you're closing the sixth rank. The knight is much more active in the center. And the attempt to attack these weak pawns is not a problem at all. You can play knight e6. And if you take on b7, there is king c6 and both the king and... Uh, sorry, the rook and knight are both hanging not played black instead went for rook h1 now it's knight f6 king e7 knight e4 beautiful improvement of the knight defending the pawn on c3 the knight is supported by the pawn rook g7 with a skewer on the seventh is a deadly threat king f7 attacking the rook rook f6 check king e7 rook g6 repeating the moves to gain some time that's why you play with these two sequence increment and now rook d6 excellent idea again renewing the threat on the seventh and if you uh, play king e7 here, then the rook will come to d5 when the pawn on b5 is going to drop. And very likely the pawn on b7 as well. Therefore, black instead, play the move rook h2 check. King goes to d3, rook goes back. Of course, you got to watch out for rook d1 ideas, but rook d7 is a check. King got to go away. Now you take the pawn on b7. Black is completely busted here because on the next move, the pawn on b5 will be taken by he, therefore... Desperately tried here to move king f5, looking for counterplay, but forgetting that there is also another knight for knight g3, and he had to resign this game, which means that Magnus tied 
with Vahi at this particular point with a few more rounds to go. But eventually Magnus managed to overtake Vahi after an amazing performance by both players. Magnus eventually ended the um, tournament half a point more than his main rival. And that is another amazing performance by Magnus Carlsen because thanks to a 10, uh, 10 victories in a row, an unbeaten streak, he just managed to catch up with Vahi with an, also an amazing performance, especially on the first Blitz day. And Magnus uh, bounced back in typical Magnus style. That's what he has been doing so often in chess. After starting relatively poorly, he managed to bounce back, fight back. And uh, then when he once he is um, on steam, he really knows how to... Uh, to catch up with his uh, main contenders. Very impressive performance. Let me know what do you think of this game. Thanks for tuning in. Give it a like this video if you think it's worth it. And also make sure to come back to the channel if you want to see more videos. Thanks for doing that. See you soon again. Bye bye.